In this video, I'm going to share every piece of insight I have to help you become a National Geographic Explorer. These are lessons I've learned from getting a grant from the National Geographic Society myself, from exchanging notes with tons of other Nat Geo filmmakers, and from years of attending the National Geographic Storyteller Summit, in which I've gone to sessions specifically on how to get their grants. I'm going to go over what a National Geographic Explorer grant is, who should apply, how to apply for one, what will make your application stand out, how you're most likely to screw it up, what you should do if you get accepted or rejected, and lastly, I'll get real about the biggest value of a Nat Geo grant, which I'm going to guess might surprise you. Hey everyone, my name is Austin Meyer, and I'm not only a National Geographic Explorer, but I am a documentary filmmaker who has worked on projects for HBO, Hulu, The New York Times, PBS, and more. And on this channel, I share the skills, mindsets, and lessons that have helped me in my career. As I mentioned in the intro, today we are talking about the National Geographic Explorer Grant, but all the tips I share today are applicable to any grant you apply to. So even if you aren't interested in Nat Geo, the takeaways here will apply to whichever grant you are targeting, especially the section on tips to make your application stand out. And no matter what stage of your career you're in, I do recommend looking at grants as a potential funding source. Specifically, I'm talking about non-recoupable grants, which are monetary gifts that do not need to be paid back. There are four types of grant-making entities, institutions that specifically support documentary filmmakers, government bodies that support the arts, nonprofits and foundations that support a film because the project tackles an issue they care about, and individual donors. The National Geographic Explorer grant falls into the nonprofits and foundations category which begs a question that maybe you've been asking yourself before if you've ever seen me introduce myself on this channel as a Nat Geo Explorer. And that is, what is the Nat Geo Explorer grant? Well, let me break this down. National Geographic has two main arms, National Geographic Partners and National Geographic Society. The easiest way to understand the difference between these two is partners makes money, Society gives money away. More specifically, National Geographic Partners puts out the magazine, runs the television channel, website, puts out the big budget documentaries, runs the massive social media presence, has physical products, etc. National Geographic Society is a nonprofit that gives out grants to support individuals and teams working to support their mission to, quote, illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. So a National Geographic Explorer grant comes from the society. Now that distinction between the two arms will be very important later on when we talk about what happens if you get one of these grants and the ultimate value of them. So let's go deeper. There are two levels of grants, level one and level two. Level one grants are for people earlier in their career. These grants go up to $20,000 and the projects can't be longer than one year. Level two grants are for people who are established in their career. These grants are typically in the $50,000 to $60,000 range, but can be upwards of $100,000 for two-year projects. All of these grants are given out to people who work in five areas, conservation, education, research, technology, and the one we're focusing on, storytelling. So who should apply for the storytelling grant? Well, to answer that question, I'll tell you why I applied for it. I applied for my first Nat Geo grant in 2016. I had recently graduated from Stanford's journalism school, done a video journalism internship at the LA Times, a reporting fellowship with the New York Times, and was looking for my next step. By then, I knew I didn't want to work in a newsroom, and I was starting to think that maybe this whole documentary filmmaking thing would be the next step in my career. However, I didn't wanna test that hypothesis with just endless production assistant jobs. I wanted to test it by jumping into a long-form documentary project where I got to do everything from directing to filming to editing. And I knew that if I could get a relatively no strings attached grant, I could get the financial aid and editorial support to try something risky and ambitious. Additionally, I could leverage the Nacho brand as an early career resume booster and immediately enter a community of talented, like-minded storytellers who shared my passion for the craft. So in 2016, I went for it. Building off the reporting I had done for the New York Times on malnutrition and maternal health in India, alongside the Pulitzer Prize winning columnist Nicholas Kristof, I applied to the Nat Geo grant to create a documentary film looking at the state of maternal and infant health care in Zambia. 
The story would follow the pregnancy and delivery of two women, one in an urban township and one in a rural village, to illustrate the challenges faced by mothers in a region with some of the highest rates of infant and maternal mortality in the world. I applied once, got rejected. I applied the second time, got rejected. And then on my third attempt, I heard this news. Today, I got some very exciting news to share with you, but first I'm going to need a drum roll. I am a National Geographic Explorer. And a couple months later, I landed in Zambia. And now I'm here. So if you are like I was, early in your career, but with enough of a portfolio to showcase that you have potential, if you're ambitious, if you're down to take creative risks, if having Nat Geo on your resume would be a big boost, if you wanna be part of a community of like-minded storytellers, if you have a story you're passionate about telling, and if you align with National Geographic's brand, this could be for you. Oh, and one more trait that's important, if you're not going to just apply, but if you really wanna get it, you are someone who gets fuel from rejection because this grant is competitive. I'm going to let you in on some insider knowledge that I got while at Nat Geo headquarters for the Storyteller Summit, where an editor told me that for every level one grant cycle, they get about 1,200 applications and they select 20. For level two grants, they get hundreds of applications and choose about seven. So if you're game for a little competition, let's talk about how to apply. Applications can be found over on the Society's website, which I will put a link to in the description. And your project needs to align with one of Nat Geo's six areas of focus, ocean, land, wildlife, histories and culture, planetary health, and space. The application window is open twice a year, typically in April and October, with a turnaround time on decisions in the five to six month range. You'll start with a pre-application, which is kind of like a pitch, after which you'll move on to the main application, which is more involved. To dig more into what exactly is in those applications, check out the links in the description also to application templates. Next, I wanna to touch on the six keys you should focus on in your application to stand out from the crowd. And these tips are applicable for grants far beyond the Nat Geo ecosystem. The first is story, not topic. A lot of people who pitch stories or apply to grants don't actually pitch a story. They pitch a topic. A topic is what the story is about. A story is why it's interesting. A topic can be boiled down to a single declarative sentence of mostly nouns, while a story has characters, conflict, and timeliness. Looking back at my pitch, the topic was maternal health in Zambia. The story was about 34-year-old Grace Chibilica, a mother of four living in a rural Zambian village, as she sets out to have her first successful delivery in a clinic in a region with some of the highest rates of infant and maternal mortality in the world. In that example, we move from a huge topic to a specific story, which has a character in grace, timeliness in the length of a pregnancy through delivery, and conflict in the form of the regional mortality rates and her first birth not at home. So in your application, stand out by pitching a story, not a topic. The second key is to assume a beginner's mind. You have to assume that the person reviewing your application knows nothing about the topic you're pitching. When we are so close to the stories we're pitching, it's easy to take our knowledge for granted. So don't forget to step back and explain things, especially when it comes to stakes. Don't assume the reviewer cares as much as you do. In fact, don't assume they care at all. Illustrate why this is so important, starting from first principles. Thirdly, be specific about what you will produce. When you apply for a grant like this, you can say, I'm going to create a documentary film, but that could mean so many things, a feature length, a 10 minute short. So even if you are not sure how everything will pan out, set expectations about your specific form that your project will take. Now, that being said, don't promise too much. This is one of the areas I struggled with when I was first applying for grants. I was so eager to get a grant and willing to work so hard while I was out in the field that I just promised everything. In my first Nat Geo application, I pitched that I would go to multiple countries, I would write articles, create a documentary, create a photo book, post regularly on social media, and everything else I could think of. Because I figured, wow, this will impress them. Well, it actually did the opposite. It actually made me look less professional. Like I didn't know how much work any one of those mediums would take if I were to do them at a high level. Thankfully, I was given this feedback, and on my third application, I focused on just creating a 20-minute documentary film, and that is what I produced. 
So when you're applying, think about feasibility and think about your expertise. Grant makers want you to focus on what you do really well and only doing what is feasible within the scope of the grant where you can still pay yourself. So don't promise the world. Promise a focused project that you are uniquely able to do really well. The fifth key is to help reviewers visualize. All of these tips amount to this message. When grant reviewers read your application, they should be able to visualize exactly what they're investing in. They should be able to see your story in their mind. That's why you should lean into specifics, even if you aren't exactly sure how things will pan out. You can always change course when you're in the field and as the documentary changes in real time, but you should still have a plan at the outset and a story that is so specific that reviewers can't help but visualize the movie in their head as they read your application, that's what you should focus on. And the sixth key is to ensure a safe investment. With any of these early career grants, you need to do everything you can to make reviewers feel like they will get a return on their investment. They likely don't know who you are or what you're capable of. Assume that they think you'll just run off with their money. So in your application, prove why you're a safe bet. This was a big focus of my application. I was applying as a white man from America to go create a documentary film on maternal health care in rural Africa. Why would that be a safe bet? I had to make the case. So alongside my documentary portfolio, I submitted my New York Times reporting on maternal health. I also submitted letters of recommendation from a Pulitzer Prize winner who covers that topic all the time. Then I also spent months building partnerships with healthcare organizations in Zambia who work on maternal health issues. In the end, I submitted nine letters of support from these organizations, including one from the permanent secretary of Zambia's Ministry of Health. All of this is because I wanted to assure the reviewers that I was going to accomplish what I said I would accomplish. I have the ability, I have the access, I have the support on the ground. You will get a return on your investment if you give me the money. And thankfully they did. Now the most likely way that you're going to screw up your application is by doing the opposite of the six pointers I just gave. But the other big one is by not thinking about how your project fits with the goals, brand, and catalog of a grant-making organization like National Geographic. Don't pitch a story that has already been reported on for their magazine. Don't pitch a story about sports if the story doesn't have any tie-in with their six areas of focus. Do a bit of research with how your story would fit into the larger ecosystem of the publication. And before we move on to what you should do if you get a grant, one last insider tip on the application process. And again, this is from an editor at Nat Geo. In 2023, I was told that 80% of the applications they receive from storytellers fit into their focus area of human history and culture. However, every area of focus gets the same amount of funding. That doesn't mean to completely change your project if you did want to apply in that category. After all, that's the category I applied under and I was successful. But it does mean that if your project could at all be cross-listed between that category and another, I suggest you choose the other one for a competitive advantage. So what should you expect after you've applied to the Explorer grant? Well, if we're playing the odds, you will likely get rejected the first time you apply. At which point, I recommend you follow up with whoever emails you to see if you can get feedback on your application. I got feedback after my second attempt, which really helped me hone my third application for success. But even if you don't get feedback, go back to the drawing board, refine your application, and try again. If you do receive the grant, congratulations, you are now a National Geographic Explorer. But let me set expectations for you. And this is not just the experience I had, but the experience of countless other grantees I have talked with. If you get a level one grant, Natio Society will cut you a check and you will hardly ever hear from them again. On the one hand, that is good because you have freedom to go do your thing however you want. But it can also be frustrating because if you're like I was, I wanted Nat Geo to be involved. I wanted support. I wanted to be publishing on social media along the way. I wanted feedback from them. I wanted to leverage their large platform for this important story I cared about. But I didn't get that. And that's because there are dozens, if not hundreds of folks out there on active grants at any given time. And Nat Geo only has a couple storytelling program officers appointed to work with all of them. So we're all pretty much out there on our own. Even after you finish your project, there is no guarantee that Nat Geo will publish because as I said in the beginning of this video, Nat Geo's publishing arm is separate from their grant making arm. 
After each grant project is done, the society sends over a little brief to folks on the partner side of the organization that explains what the project was and showcases some selects. Then the folks at Partners have an exclusivity window to decide whether or not they want to publish it. It's pretty rare that Partners picks up projects, and even more rare if you are a filmmaker because Nat Geo really is a photography-led print and digital publication. They don't have a great video platform. The best you can really hope for is to get your documentary published on Nat Geo's YouTube channel. For my project, Nat Geo passed on their exclusivity window, so I was free to take it to my eventual publishing partner, the United Nations Population Fund, which is the United Nations arm of women's and reproductive health, and also went to Vox Media. Eventually, after a couple of years, it did end up coming out on Nat Geo's YouTube channel, but again, there was little to no effort uh, from their side to really promote it. I say all of this not to disparage Nat Geo and their grant program. It's amazing for what it is. I say all of this so that you have realistic expectations, which to recap are, if you get a grant, keep your expectations low when it comes to Nat Geo's involvement. You get their money, you get to use their brand name, you get invited to National Geographic's annual Storyteller Summit, and you get access to some editors who can get your work in front of the right people at Nat Geo. But for the most part, you are on your own and it's your responsibility as an independent filmmaker to make it happen. Outside of the money, getting this grant does not mean that anything else is going to be handed to you. Which leads me to the final thing that I wanna to touch on today. What is the biggest value of the Nat Geo grant? Well, to be honest, I don't think it's the money. I don't think it is the slight leg up you have publishing there. I think the biggest value is the brand association and access to community. As a freelancer early in your career, it can be difficult to stand out and can be difficult to find like-minded collaborators. Getting this grant immediately gives you the title of National Geographic Explorer. And if you're an independent filmmaker, being able to leverage a global brand like Nat Geo can help you stand out from the crowd. I mean, that's why I introduce myself here on the channel with that title at the beginning of almost every video because it signals a certain level of proficiency and experience that wouldn't be communicated if I just said, hi, I'm the founder of Austin Meyer Films. On top of the brand association, the access to a community of fellow grantees and freelancers is also a massive value. Attending events like the National Geographic Storyteller Summit or Explorers Festival is a rare opportunity to meet and connect with extremely talented and passionate storytellers who can become lifelong friends and collaborators. And this is why, even though you're really on your own, after receiving your grant, if you want to make a career in this space, I encourage you to take a shot at this opportunity because the Nacho brand and the friendships you'll make from entering this community have no timeline or monetary limit. They will stay with you forever. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful and that it gave you valuable insights not only to the Nacho grant, but grants beyond it too. If you're thinking about applying, just go for it. Don't reject yourself. And if you want to check out the documentary that I made on my grant in 2018, here it is. I'll see you next week. Until then, go out and tell some stories.